Kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debt, and we forgive our debt. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Most High, for this blessed day. We thank you for this men meeting. We praise you. Be with us, bless us, all of those that are here in the home and in Jordan in the gathering, and also those over the airways. Bless that word to go forth and let it be in many uh, strength. Those who need strength and encouragement, those who need encouragement, we love you and thank you for the brothers who pray they receive this word. And truly, it is a blessing and it is to strengthen them and not, not call them problems, but to strengthen them and let them know that we love them. Thank you right now. Let's say thank you, Mr. Ayesha Rahai. Ayesha Muspashtai. Walk with us to walk with us. Thank you to walk to walk to walk to Amen. Well, thank you today for joining us here. We're gathering here, the Brotherhood meeting here, excuse me, here in Jordan. This is Elder Lashawan to my left. It's uh, Brother Mashon. And uh, we want to thank you to every one of you for listening in. Um, today's subject, we're going to begin talking on a subject that apparently there's a lot of need for the subject. It's, it's a very uh, um, touchy subject, but it needs to be talked about because apparently there's a lot of problems uh, with this this type of uh, sin or breaking of the law amongst our people. So we want to felt the need by the most high to talk about this today. So um, put your shoes on. Some of you are going to be sensitive. I'm trying to brush my hair down. Please excuse me. In, uh, in everything, but we sort of need to talk about it. So the other day we want to talk about is whoremongering, or whoremongering. Uh, this is a very touchy subject, but apparently there are a number of brothers who will say they're Hebrews and they're not displaying the characteristics of a real Hebrew man, and they're out there uh, doing things that they ought not to be doing, and uh, taking advantage of some of our sisters, and we felt a need to address this problem because it is a problem. It's a problem among us because we've been copies of the nations. And so we want to talk about whoremongers today. Uh, what is a whoremonger? Whoremonger is the same as a whoremaster. That's what the definition is. A man who practiced, uh, oh, I'm sorry, who prostrated his body to another, uh, uh, lust for him, uh, oh, I'm sorry, lust for hire. A man who was. Uh, Indulges in unlawful sexual intercourse, a fornicator. Um, another word you can use for me is a male prostitute. That's what a whoremonger is. Now, some people call the term, the common term, gigolo, and also that obviously is basically a man who goes around playing, sleeping with different women for whatever reason. He had no intention of having true love or wife, or if he does have a wife, he's playing out on his wife. So apparently there's a lot of this going on in our Hebrew nation and we need to address it with our men, men folks. So uh, there's definitely a need for this. Uh, we're going to look at um, Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes rather, the 12th chapter. We're going to start at verse 13 and we're going to begin reading at verse number 13. Ecclesiastes uh, verse Twelve and thirteen. Uh, Twelfth chapter of the two verses. Mm-hmm. Ecclesiastes. Mm-hmm. Chapter twelve, verse thirteen. Mm-hmm. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Hear the most high. Hear the most high. 
keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. So this is the whole duty of man. All oh, right there. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. In other words, let us hear the whole thing. Not just part of it, not just the beginning, but the whole matter. For this is the conclusion. We want to hear the conclusion of the whole matter. We want to hear not only the beginning, but we want to go all the way to the end. And so it is with the word of the Most High. It says, fear the Most High. You see, that's the problem. When brothers are doing whoremongering, they don't fear the Most High. And it said, keep his commandments. And they most certainly not keeping his commandments because they know they're not supposed to commit adultery. They know that. They're not supposed to commit fornication. They know that. For this is the whole duty of man. You see that? The whole duty of man. What is the whole duty of man? First it said, fear the most high. Let's go to Psalms 111 and 10. Psalms 111 and 10. Psalms 111 verse 10. Mm -hmm. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the most high is the beginning of wisdom. You see that? Keep reading, brother. The good understanding have all that have all they that do this command. Mm -hmm. His praise endureth forever. So the fear of the most high is the beginning of wisdom. You don't know what wisdom is until you begin to fear the most high. A good understanding have all they that that do his commandment. So if you're not doing his commandments and keeping his commandments, you don't have no understanding. I don't care how smart you think you are. I don't care uh, how long you've been in the church, quote unquote. How long you know you wake up as a Hebrew and you're part of the Hebrew nation. You don't have, uh, if you're not keeping his commandments, you don't have the understanding of the most high. You have your own understanding which is of the devil so it's out of the most high or of the devil because you're not standing by yourself you got to serve one or the other his praise endureth forever so the most high praise endureth forever why because of the understanding which comes from him by keeping his commandments you're going to praise him forever that's what you're going to do so the duty of man is to fear the most high that's the only way you're going to begin to get any type of wisdom is for you to fear him. Okay? You need to fear him. Second thing is to keep his commandments. You see that? Let's go to 1 John 5 and 3. 1 John 5 and 3. So this is what these brothers need to do. That's why they are out here whoremongering and stuff. They're not doing what they're supposed to. They're not fearing him. They're not keeping his commandments. They're playing games and leading to their own understanding. And guess what? Most high gonna get them, and they and they and they and they out here misleading these women, and present, pretending to be uh, something that they're not. Getting these uh, the sisters who were looking for a good Hebrew husband, getting involved with them and, and and playing with other women on the side, and then once they consummate this thing and say they're married, then they're still whoremongering around out here. That's not of the Most High. You're not waking up. You're playing a game. That's what you're doing. You know better than the so-called. A gigolo or the man in the Christian church. You know better than that. First John mm -hmm. chapter 5 verse 3. For mm -hmm. well, this is the love of the Most High. Mm -hmm. That we keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. And his commandments are not grievous. For well, this is the love of the Most High. That we keep his commandments. You see that? Don't tell the Most High you love him. And you ain't keeping his commandments. And all of you who say you're Christians. Don't say that the commandments are done away. Because here... In the first John, it tells you plain as day, you're supposed to what? Keep his commandments. It said, if you love him, keep his commandments. Uh-huh. And his commandments are not grievous. They're not hard. They're easy. If you want to do right, guess what? You're going to do right. If you want to do wrong, you're going to do wrong. Let's go to first John 2 and 4. We got to keep these commandments. First John 2 and 4. First John chapter 2 mm -hmm. verse 4. Uh-huh. He that saith, I know him. He that saith, I know him. And keepeth not his commandments. And saith, and keepeth not his commandment. Is a liar. You are a liar. And the truth is not in him. And the truth is not in you. So don't tell me, I know the Most High. I know Yeshua. And you ain't keeping his commandments. He said, you are a liar. And you know who the liar, where the liar comes from? Comes from the devil. He is the father of a lie. He started it. And he's going to, it's, it's going to end with him. When they pin him and put him down in Hades and Hades, throw him also down in the pit. The other pit that burned with fire and brimstone. For the truth is not in him. It's not in you, brother. You're lying. You ain't keeping the commandments. You don't know the Father. 
You around here playing games, playing these sisters like they pinball, pinball machine. That's what you're doing. Banging from one to the other. Bling, 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 and think that's funny. That's not funny. That's not funny at all. You're causing Israel the error, and you are the head. How can the body function well if the head is sick? The body going to be sick. And it's a shame, but we got to stop following, doing like these Gentiles. Your days of being a playboy and a Mac daddy and a gigolo, all those days are over with now. You got to stand up and be a man. You got to be accounted for. And that's what you need to do. You know, when I hear this stuff, it disturbed me as an older man in the Most High and as an older man, Hebrew man. This disturbed me knowing that my young daughters got to go through this and put up with this kind of junk. They deserve better than that. And don't think that because you're a man, they automatically have to deal with you because they don't. They don't have to be bothered with you. They can get another good man. And I'm saying to you, if you're doing it, cut it out. If you're not, don't worry about it. But this is something that e uh, Israel needs to deal with. Because we are in a state of denial a lot of times about these kind of things going on. So we, the second thing, the whole duty of man is keep the commandments. The third duty of man is to prepare for eternity. Every work will be manifested. So everything you're doing, brothers, whether it's good or bad, is going to be manifested. It's going to be talked about. It's going to be shown to you in the end. So you can tip on the night all you want. You can run and hide in the corner. You can do whatever you want to do. You can slide in the midnight, go to that woman's house you know you ain't got no business doing, and then slip back over to your own woman's house later on the next day. You think anybody's seeing you? Oh, yeah, the Most High sees everything. Them angels sees everything. And that woman going to know about it, too. And so we're not supposed to do that. Whether it's good or bad, everything is going to be manifested. We, and it's going to be shown to you. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, verse number 9. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, 5 and 9. 2 Corinthians, chapter 5, uh -huh. verse 9. Mm -hmm. Wherefore we labor. That whether present mm -hmm. or absent, mm -hmm. we may be accepted of him. Mm -hmm. So wherefore we labor. We ain't working just to be working, whether he's whether present or absent. You see, we do this, we want to be accepted by the most high. You see, whether you're around saved people all the time, or whether you by yourself, or you're around sinners or Gentiles, guess what? We want to be accepted. We want to labor for the most high. Read verse 10, brother. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the most uh, the dying of your shine. That we excuse me, that the life also say it again. Yeah, verse ten. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong track. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Five and two. For we must uh -huh. all appear before the judgment seat of, of Christ. Uh -huh. That everyone may receive the things done in his body mm -hmm. according to that which he hath done, uh -huh. whether it be good or bad. You see that right there? For we all must appear before the judgment seat of Yeshua, and he's going to be judging, and everyone may receive the things done in his body. So, see, whatever you're doing in your body, lying, cheating, whoremongering, fornicating, whatever it is, you're going to have to stand before him and be judged according to that which you have done, whether it be good or bad. So you're going to come before him. There's no way around it. That's why it behooves the brothers, the brethren, to do that which is right. You're going to be judged. And Christ is going to be, or Yeshua is going to be the one that's doing the judging. See, you think you're doing this stuff in your body and you ain't causing a harm. Yes, you are. You're causing sin to your own body. And you're connecting with someone else that you have no business connecting with. Once you come into the truth and the knowledge of the Most High, all these Play game, playing games and, and running from this one and that one and all that kind of stuff is supposed to cease. It's supposed to cease. You are a new creature. Different. Let's go to Revelation, the 20th chapter, verse uh, 11, 20 and 11 through 15. Revelation 20, verse 11 through 15. Revelation. Judgment, judging you. Read, brother. Yes, sir. Chapter 20, mm -hmm. verse 11. Mm -hmm. And I saw a great white throne. Uh -huh. And I saw a great white throne. And him that sat on and it. him that sat on it. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. From whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was not, and there was found no place for them. There was no place for the, for the heaven or the earth to hide. They fled away from them. Go ahead, brother. They wasn't there. 
and I saw the dead, mm. small and great, uh -huh. stand before the Most High. Uh -huh. And the books were open. Books were open. And another book was open. Another book was open. Which is the book of life. The book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written mm -hmm. in the book. And the dead was judged by those things which were written out of the in the books, within the books. According to their works. Whatever you've done, whether it's good or bad, guess what? It's going to be read and you're going to be judged by it. Keep reading, brother. And the sea gave up the dead mm -hmm. which were in it, mm -hmm. and the and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Mm -hmm. And they were judged every man according to their works. So the sea gonna give up the dead, death gonna give up the dead, hell gonna give up the dead, and everyone gonna be judged, every man according to whatever you have done in your lifetime. So don't think there ain't no record being recorded, and you ain't gonna give an account because you are. So that's why it behooves you to think twice before you do all these things that you are doing, brothers. That's right. Is you going to be judged? Read, my brother. Verse fourteen. Uh huh. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Death and hell going to be cast into the lake of fire. So you can't get by by dying. You sure can't get by by being in hell. That's going to be cast in another lake called a lake of fire. Read, brother. This is the second death. This is the second death. Keep reading. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life mm -hmm. was cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever not found in the book of written in the book of life. We'll be cast into the lake of fire. So there's no way around it, brother. There's no way around it. Poor mongering and all this other type of stuff. Guess what? Going to be judged, written in the book. So it behooves us to cease this activity, cease this foolishness, and get serious about what we're doing and stop playing games. Let's go to Matthew 20, uh, let's see, 20, like 22. Tell you what, let's go to Psalms 128 and 1. We'll come back to Matthew. Psalm 128, mm -hmm. verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Most High, mm -hmm. that walketh in his ways. Blessed. Say it again for me, brother. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Most High. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Most High. That walketh in his ways. That walketh in his ways. That's right. You want to walk in his ways. You're blessed when you do that. That fear him. That walk in his ways. You want to do that. So we're going to go to, let's see. Here. Give, me, give, me, give me just a moment. Give me the second verse. I'm trying to double check this verse. Let's go to 22. Let's go to 22nd chapter of Matthew, 22, 37. 22nd chapter, verse 37. Read 37 through 40. Matthew chapter 22, mm -hmm. verse 37. Mm -hmm. Shia said unto him, mm -hmm. Thou shalt love the Most High thy power with uh -huh. all thy heart. Uh -huh. And with all thy soul. Mm -hmm. And with all thy mind. Uh -huh. This is the first and great commandment. This is the first and great commandment. Love the Most High with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. All of it. Not part of it. All of it. This is the first and great commandment. This is the one which all the rest of them rest upon. Go ahead, my brother. And the second is like unto it. Uh -huh. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So all this foolishness that you're doing, you, you know, just doesn't make any sense, brothers, to be doing this sort of thing. Read verse 40 for me, please. And these two commandments uh -huh. hang all on the law and the prophets. On these two commandments hang all the law. So all these 600 and some odd uh, number of laws, and, and, and statues, all of this hang on these two great commandments right here. The first one, love the most high with your heart, your soul, and your mind. And the second one is love thy neighbor as thyself. This is what we need to do to prepare for eternity. This is what we need to do. This is the duty of man is to do these things. That's what we need to do. Let's go to uh Proverbs 8 and 13. Proverbs 8 and 13. The duty of man. Whoremongers. All these things are going to come. 
They're going to come. We're going to have to give an account. We need to consider the whole matter. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. Uh huh. The fear of the Most High is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. Mm -hmm. And the forward mouth do I hate. The fear of the Most High is to hate evil. You see that? To hate it. To hate it. Pride, arrogancy. You see that? When you fear the most high, you're going to hate evil. You're going to hate pride. Why? Because the devil had, Lucifer had pride in him. That's how he got in trouble. That was the first thing that caused him to fall was his pride. Cain had the same thing. That's why his conscience fell. He had pride. Arrogancy. You can't be arrogant, brother. You got to be humble. You got to be meek. Just because you a man, don't make it right every time for you to try to lord over a woman. Okay? You can't do that. Especially when you're wrong. And the evil way and the froward mouth. That's one of the most dirty mouths, okay? A mouth that want to talk all the time. Always two for one. Don't know how to keep it closed. Don't know how to zip it. You got to learn how to control your tongue and control your mouth. He said, do I hate? The most high don't like that kind of stuff. So we need to reassess ourselves, brother. We need to reassess ourselves in how we act and what we do. We need to do that. The fear of the Most High will cut all these things out. Arrogancy, pride, evil, evil ways. Doing two for one. Just because a sister won't do something, you're going to do something evil to get back at her. Just because she won't sleep with you, then you're going to go out and sleep with another woman. That don't make no sense at all. And you know the truth. You're supposed to ain't supposed to be fornicating or doing adultery. You know better than that. Keep yourself together till the time comes. Why you can't keep? You say you got the Holy Spirit. You say you know you're a Hebrew. You say you know woke up. You're keeping the commandments and the statutes. Then you know that well one of, the, one of the commandments for you not to be committing fornication and adultery. You know that. You know that. But he said because you're doing these things, he don't like it. He hate it. Most I hate that kind of stuff. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, please. The problem with most people is people all the time believe in everything rather than reading and studying stuff like they need to. Proverbs chapter 12. No, please ask this. Uh, excuse me. Please please ask this. chapter 12, verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment. Keep reading, brother. With every secret thing. With every secret thing. Go ahead, brother. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. You see that? Everything, going, every work going to be brought into judgment with see, every secret thing. So all this hiding and snooping and dodging and stuff you think you're doing, brothers, and getting by with it, this stuff going to be brought into, it's going to be brought into judgment, whether it be good or bad. The Most High going to bring it all. So you can hide from that, sister. You can hide from your wife. You can have a woman on the side. You can have another, some men have another family on the, whole, on the other side. Whoremongering. Oh, man, they ain't one, ain't it ain't enough for me. Yeah, oh man, come on, give me a break. You're not even taking care of the one you're dealing with. How are you going to take care of the other ones? The two, the three, the four. And help us when we get to this seven that a lot of the young brothers are looking at. Got the eyes on that. Got the eyes on that. Most shall bring every work. The most high shall bring every work into judgment. That's what he's going to do. Let's go to Romans, the 13th chapter, verse number one. Romans 13, 1. Romans 13 and 1, please. Romans, <clears throat> Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Uh huh. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Let every soul be subject to the Most High. Keep reading. For there are no powers but the Most High. There's no power but the Most High. The powers that be ordained are, excuse me, that the powers that be are ordained mm -hmm. of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So any powers like that, any power that you know from heaven is ordained from the Most High. Go ahead, my brother. Go to uh, verse 3. Verse 2. Uh -huh. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, mm -hmm. resisteth the ordinance of the Most High. So you breaking the laws of the Most High by resisting these, the power, you resisting these, or uh, 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 resisting the power of the Most High, you breaking the laws of the Most High. Go ahead, brother. And they that resist mm -hmm. shall, receive, <clears throat> shall receive to themselves damnation. You're going to receive damnation by, by resisting these laws, by breaking the ordinances or resisting the ordinance of the Most High. You, you, you condemning yourself. You can talk all you want with your lips, but if you ain't living it, you're resisting it. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Uh-huh. For rulers are not a terror to good work. Uh-huh. To good work. Uh-huh. 
but to the evil. Uh huh. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Uh huh. Do that which is good. Uh huh. Then thou shalt have praise of the same. Thank you. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Huh? Brothers, we got to get it together. We got to do the right thing. There's no question about that. Let's go to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse number 5. The Most High shall bring every work into judgment. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 5. Uh huh. Therefore, judge nothing before the time. Judge nothing before his time. Until the Most High comes. Uh huh. Who both will bring to light mm -hmm. the hidden things of darkness. Uh huh. And will make manifest the counsels of the heart. Uh huh. And. Then shall every man have praise of the Most High. So what? So what he's saying here, uh, 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 Paul is saying here, to judge nothing before the time. You see, people are quick to judge people all the time. They quick to pass judgment and a ruling and everything else. Listening to folks in the street, they don't know. They don't have the, uh, all of the information. We quick to believe a lie before we believe the truth. We don't go and research and do anything. We we love a dirty stuff on other people. But we don't want stuff our business out in the street. You see? We ain't supposed to do that. We're supposed to wait and let the Most High give us the truth. Who both will bring to the light the hidden things of darkness. So whatever a person is doing, you don't have to figure where everybody, guess what? It's going to come to light. If that man is not living holy, if he's out there with extramarital affairs, if he's doing what he ain't supposed to do, lying, cheating, drinking, smoking, whatever he's doing, it's going to come. It's going to be the hidden Things of the darkness is going to come to the light. He's going to manifest them. Whatever is in the heart is going to it's going to come to pass. It's going to come up. He's going to talk about it. He's going to do it. I don't care how many scriptures he can quote. There are plenty of these Hebrews I can quote. Been alive and been awake, quote unquote, for three, four, five, eight years, ten years. But they still have him poor mugging running around playing game. And then shall every man have praise of the Most High once these things are manifest. Why? Because the truth, you can't help me. But the love of the truth, that's all there is to it. That's it. So, the Most High knows this. He knows everything. He knows it all. No question about it. No question about it. Let's go to 1 Peter 4 and 17. 1 Peter, 4th chapter, verse 17. All these things are going to be manifested. They ain't going to be hid. You can hide in the dark now. But guess what? It's coming to the light. Most I said it. Matter of fact, a lot of this stuff comes to the light even now before judgment day. You can see it. First Peter chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 17. Mm -hmm. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the, at the house of the Most High. You see that? For the time has come that judgment must begin at where? Not with the sinner man, but with the saints. We're going to get judged first. Not with the liars and the whoremongers and all that stuff. But the saints going to be judged. Those who pretending to say they're, they're right. Okay? It's going to be judged with the, the, the house of the most high. Going to be judged first. Go ahead, brother. And if it first begin at us, uh -huh. what shall the end of them mm -hmm. that obey not the, the gospel of the most high? You see what he's saying? And if it begin at us, where shall the sinner? Where shall the sinner? Where is he going to end up? Huh? So you, the, you all is... Sinning and doing all this stuff you ought not to be doing. Guess what? We don't know where you're going to end up. But we're going to get judged first, saints. Those who say they're the household of faith. Those who say that they're uh, no Ahia, Ashur Ahia. They know Yeshaya. They know Wakadah. They say they know this. They say they're Hebrew. They're keeping the commandments and the statutes. Guess what? You're going to be judged first. So you have to make sure your house is clean, swept, and in order. That's what you have to do. The, these things, judgment will come, and the Most High will bring every work in the judgment. There is no, no question about that. No question about it. See, most people they lower the deal with. The, like I say, they don't. Most people are not concrete thinkers. They're abstract. You know, concrete means things that you, uh, you know, you it, th these are reality. You see what I'm saying? They're reality. They're actual instances. Are instant things. Okay. Okay. Real, they're tangible. You can touch them. You can think. That's concrete thinking. Most people, they're going to be abstract. They're going to listen to other stuff uh, that people tell them. You know what I mean? They believe because people say this, they don't really get proof of the stuff. They love to listen to lies. They love to listen to things 
or an idea of something else that's created. You see? They love to do that kind of stuff. Rather than thinking, rather than getting the scriptures and the word and, and studying it and knowing it, they're going to listen to them. Y'all sisters, stop listening to these brothers talking this stuff, just running their mouth trying to quote scriptures and stuff. Make sure you know whatever they're saying is true. That you get the word and prove it with the word of the Most High. If that brother is not quoting the scriptures right and living by the scriptures, run from him. Run from him. Get away from him. That's what you need to do. You need to do that. No question about it. But now we want to go. We want to keep thinking about it and continue on this thing about the Let's go to the book of Sirach. I'm going to give you the book here, brother. I want you to read some scriptures out of the book of Sirach for me. We want to read these because we know that these sisters are being taken advantage of. I want you to start here. This is the book of Sirach. Mm -hmm. We're going to read the chapter 9, and we're going to start at verse number 9. Sirach, chapter 9, verse number 9. Give me a minute. So rock nine and verse number nine. You can read, brother. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. Nine and nine. Oh, sorry. Nine that was verse nine. eight. Sorry, mm -hmm. verse nine. Mm -hmm. Sit not at all with another man's wife. Sit not at all with another man's wife. Nor sit down with the arms in thine arms. Uh -huh. Excuse, excuse me. Nor sit down with her in thine arms. Nor sit down with her in, in your arms, brother. You ain't supposed to be sitting down with no other man's wife. You ain't supposed to put your hand on no other man's uh, woman. You ain't supposed to put your arms. So when y'all brothers come into the house of the Most High, and y'all giving these hugs and stuff, don't put your arms around nobody else's wife. It's all right if you want to shake her hand. That's all you need to do. You don't need to be hugging on her. And you most certainly don't need to be sitting around some other man's wife. Whether that's in the restaurant, whether it's at the house, you don't need to be doing that. Brother ain't home, you go home. Don't you go in his house. Go ahead, brother. And spend not thy money with her at, at the wine. Spend not thy money on her. Don't give her no bottle of wine or glass of wine. Don't be offering to give her no drink. That's not your place to do this. She belongs to somebody else. Read, brother. Lest thine heart incline unto her. Lest your heart begin to make you lust after her and want to have her. And you know she belongs to somebody else. You being a whole mother. That's what you're doing. Don't even put yourself in that position, brother. Go ahead, brother. And so through thy desire, thou fall into destruction. So what happened? You begin to desire this other man's wife, lusting after her. And, and warning her, and you fall into destruction. So don't put yourself in that kind of position. Don't sit at, not at all with another man's wife. That was, it said not at all. On no circumstance. You ain't supposed to sit with her. Period. He ain't around. He ain't there. Guess what? Don't sit with this man's wife. Don't put your arms around her. I don't care what kind of easy going to church hug you want to give her, whatever else. Keep your hands to yourself, brother. This is the scripture. Don't spend your money on her, especially not no wine. You know what wine do to you. Get you in trouble, loosen you up, loosen her up. Next time you know things going haywire, and you're doing things you ought not to be doing. So don't be a sinner. Then you'll be blaming it on the wine. No, it was in your heart. It was in your heart. Don't blame it on the wine. Let's go to uh, chapter 11, verse number 2. Sirach 11, verse 2. These are the things that these men have been doing and are doing now. They're still doing it. They're whoremongering. Don't put yourself in that position. You don't want nobody to call you that. Guess what? Don't do that. Go ahead, brother. 
chapter 11, verse 2. Uh huh. Commend not a man for his beauty. Mm -hmm. Neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. Mm -hmm. Hold on a minute. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Verse 3. Oh, hold on. No, that's good. That's good. 11 and 2. Commend not a man for his beauty. See that, sister? A lot of y'all get with these brothers because they look good. Let me tell you something. That's why you get in trouble. Oh, he's so, he got a nice body. Oh, he looks so nice. He's so tall and muscular. Guess what? It's telling you right here, commend not a man for his beauty. You ain't probably around to tell him he's good looking all this kind of stuff. That's what's wrong with him. That goes to their head. They don't know how to handle a compliment. Don't be commending him. A lot of y'all get in trouble. That's why you, next thing you know, you're in the bed with him. You're doing stuff you ain't got to minute because you're looking at his body and his beauty. Guess what? He may have beauty, but he ain't got no paycheck. He ain't got no job. He ain't going to work. He's a gigolo. He's a whoremonger. And you get fooled with that. Stop looking with your eyes and start being led by the spirit of the most high. Because they're out there. You being played. Go ahead, brother. You said, neither a holy man falls out with a period. Don't dislike him because he ain't the best looking man. He might be the man for you. He can be an average man. But so many of you are so quick to judge him. Oh, he ain't got no hair. He bald here. Look at me. I ain't got no hair on the top. Okay? My hair is long gone. Okay? I got gray on my beard. Okay? Okay? Don't uphold me because of my outward appearance. Check my heart out. See if I'm a good man. Talk. Get to know the person. That because he got a head for the hair and he look good and he handsome and he young and muscles all over the place. Don't make him a great cat, sisters. Stop using your eyes. That's how you get in trouble. You get led away and they know this and they're playing you with their looks that's what they're doing they're doing that so you don't want to do that you don't want to do that let's go to uh the 25th chapter of sirach verse 20 22 25 and 22. sirach 25 and 22. Ecclesiasticus, verse, uh, chapter 25, verse 22. Mm -hmm. A harlot shall be accounted as spittle, but a married woman is a tower against death to her husband. No, no. 25 and 22, Sirach. 25, 22. Yeah. Oh, wait, that was 22. Yeah, that's all right. Sorry, sorry. 25, 22, no problem. Chapter 25, verse 22. Uh-huh. A woman... If she maintain maintain her husband, uh -huh. is full of anger, uh -huh. impudence, mm -hmm. and much reproach. A woman that maintains her husband, woman to go out there to work every day, punching that clock, bringing that check home, maintaining her husband. Now he's sitting up there, ain't working, ain't got a job, ain't trying to find no job. It says you're full of anger, and you know what I'm talking about. Y'all sisters know y'all be mad. Y'all keep anger, impudence. Okay, that's what you have also. You have this in your heart because of what you're going through. Okay? That's what you do. And that's that means to be shameful. A shamelessness, okay? Or uh, effrontery, which is mean barefaced or the audacity. That's what that means. Not only that, uh, you're angry and you have reproach. Reproach means to find fault to be uh, a, a cause or discredit to. That's what you do. You want to have a reproach with this brother. You're angry at him. But you're maintaining him. That's not your job to maintain him as a woman of the most high. That's not your job to go out there if he ain't working. That's his job to provide for his family. That's his job to be a man. You ain't a man. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't the one the most high made and told he should live by the sweat of his bride. He's supposed to take care of his family. You his helpmate. Okay? You're not the head. You're by his side. He's covering you, not you covering him. That's what's wrong. Esau got a lot of women messed all up in the head. Step back and let him be a man. Stop letting him be a boy. Stop letting him be a uh, spoiled. Just because he thinks he's a great lover and he got you all messed up. That's what's wrong with a lot of them. They think that's because they can be with a woman physically and make them feel good. And hey, they don't have to work. Oh, I can get her to do anything I want. I got her right around my finger. Well, guess what, sister? That's why you're angry. That's why you're mad. That's why you have headaches. That's why you're sick. Because you're angry because your man is not working. He ain't providing for you. You're maintaining him. Step back and get rid of them headaches and get rid of maintaining him. Let him be a man. Pull the rug off from under him. Let him fall where he's going to fall. Stop doing that. 
You ain't helping him become a man by propping him up. Stop propping him up. Let's go to uh, the 26th uh, chapter, verse number 3. Chapter 26, verse 3. Uh-huh. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. Are oh, you reading it? Chapter 26, verse 20, 26 and 3. Yeah, I read That's not it. Mm -hmm. 26 and 3. Hold on a minute. I'll get it. 26 and 3. I'm sorry. 26 and 23. I'm wrong. 26, 23. I got the 3. I just didn't put the 2 in front of it. 26, 23. Chapter 26, verse 23. Uh-huh. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. So if you ain't wicked, you don't need to be with no wicked man. But, but, but guess what? If you hanging with that wicked man... And you hanging in there, you know he's wicked. Guess what? You are wicked. You're wicked for dealing with that. You're wicked for, I'm not saying because you got involved and didn't know any better, okay? But once you know, you can't do that. You can't do that. A wicked woman is given to a wicked man. That's what the scripture says. So you need to check yourself out. See what kind of woman you are. Make sure that you're right, okay? You don't want to be given to a wicked man. Guess what? You better make sure that you're living right and you're doing it. What you're supposed to do. Bless be the most high. Bless be the most high. Let's go to, uh, go ahead. Go ahead and finish the verse, bro. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the most high. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the most high. A godly woman is given, a given to him that feareth the most high. So guess what? If that man is maintaining and doing what he's supposed to and he feels the most high, he's keeping his commandments and statutes, guess what? He's going to get a godly woman. But if he's not, guess what? He's wicked. He's wicked. And he's going to end up with a wicked woman. That's what he's going to do. He don't, most high, don't want a, 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 a good man to be with a wicked woman. And vice versa, he don't. But a most high woman, okay, it's given to him that feareth the most high. That feareth him. So those of you who fear him, guess what? And keep those commandments and do what you're supposed to do, guess what? He's going to get you to a good man. If he ain't going to act right, he ain't going to do right, he ain't going to repent and come on in and get it right. You don't need to be with that, brother. Run. Run from it. Whoremongering. That's what we're talking about. Let's go to uh, Ezra chapter 4. And 26 is going to be in this one. Keep going, it's going to be in the front by the Maccabees. First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Yeah, you're asking. Okay. Let's see if I, uh, I got each one unfolded, so you should be. You can just keep on coming here from the back here. You see the map of the union is it should be right behind it. And pick the map of the union in this area right here. Yeah, that's first Ezra. So that's where we are. For the first Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26 and 27. Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26. Mm hmm. Many men have lost their minds because of women. Many men have lost their mind because of women. And have become slaves because of them. And become slaves. They got messed all up, slaving for the woman, doing anything she wants. Got them led around by the nose. Many men have become because of these women. Brother, y'all got to get it together. You got to be a man and stop being a boy. Stop being led around by the sexual desires. You got to be stronger than that. You got to stop being a whole mother, getting yourself in trouble just because that woman looked good and she got a nine looking body. Read, my brother. Verse 27. Uh-huh. Many have perished. M many have perished. Or stumbled. Or stumbled. Or sinned. Or sinned. Because of women. Because of women. They don't perish. I know right now that for a fact. I had a young man with me in high school. He was dating this woman, and then she started messing around with another man, and both of them got in a confrontation, and guess what? One of the brothers shot the other brother, my classmate, dead, and the other man had to go to prison for about 10 to 20 years. Because he killed my classmate. What? 
He called to that woman that both of them was fooling around with. Now the other guy, the first one that got shot, he had been married to her and then went through a divorce and trying to get back with his wife. But the other man was dating her. And he got killed. Why? Because of this woman playing these games. You brothers got to get it together. You got to keep yourself together and, and stop uh, putting yourself in these kind of positions. A lot of you come in here, you find women in this strip clothes and stuff, and then all of a sudden you think she's going to change and she's going to be a wonderful wife and she's going to be a good housewife and stuff like that. It don't work like that. If that woman is evil, guess what? She's going she gonna to stay evil. Leave her in the strip club. How are you going to be a, a man of the most high trying to live right and you're going to pick up one of them type of people and then you think you're going to change her? You can't change if it ain't that hard to be changed. And the same thing with him. If he's out there at the strip club uh, teasing and dancing, and you find him out there, he ain't going to act like no responsible man. He's a stripper. He's a gigolo. He's a whole mother. That's where you got him from. That's where you should leave him. You can't change it. Let's go to Proverbs 6, chapter, verse number 22. Proverbs 6, 32, and verse 33. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32. Mm -hmm. But whoso committeth adul adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. Uh huh. Whosoever committeth adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. He that doeth, doeth it uh -huh. destroyeth his own soul. He that doeth this thing destroyeth his own soul. So I want you to understand that adultery is not something that you have to take, that you take, can take lightly. He's saying here, uh, David is saying here that he doeth it. He that do with it, you destroy your own soul. Why? Because this is a sin against your body. This is not some regular sin what you're doing. When you are committing adultery, you are connecting yourself with somebody else's uh, a spouse. And not only that, this is a spiritual thing. You open yourself up to, to uh, 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 adultery, uh, uh, demons, okay? I'm going to say it like that, a spirit, okay? Which are breaking the most high commandments and statutes and his laws. This is, this is a very serious matter. You're taking on, not only you're breaking the law, you're taking on these other spirits. That's why it's hard for you to break up with them after you get started with this and, and, and you want and, and you want to quit. Why? Because you're letting them other bad spirits or demons in you. So you don't need to take that lightly. And on top of all that, the Most High going to destroy you. In the olden days, and they should do it now, when they were finding adultery, they were stoned. They won't put in no prison. But we have grace. So because of grace, people are just abusing it. Whoremongering around. I mean, like, like they can't keep the, the underclothes on. They ain't got no kind of maintenance. It's ridiculous the stuff that people are doing. And, and the children of the Most High, ain't supposed, we ain't supposed to be doing this. Hebrew nation ain't supposed to be doing this stuff. So when you commit adultery, you, you, you lack of the understanding. You don't understand this serious stuff. How are you going to present your body a living sacrifice holy, which is acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service? How are you going to do that when you are not fornicating and committing adultery? With this one and that one and this one and that one. You don't even know what you're dealing with. That's why you got all these diseases and illnesses out here. You're destroying your own soul by doing this. Read verse 33 for him, brother. A wound and dishonor uh -huh. shall he get. A wound and dishonor shall you get. And his reproach shall not be wiped away. And your reproach is not going to be wiped away. It ain't going to be so easy to get rid of that. That's why people need to understand. This is a serious matter. When, you, when you're when you married and you go out there and commit uh, uh, adultery, or you uh, you single and you committing fornication, just laying around with this, that, and other, this is a serious matter. This thing shall, your reproach shall not be wiped away, according to the scriptures here. So don't think it's going to be just easy. Uh, oh, I can just say forgive me. And this, that. No, brothers and sisters. This is a serious matter. It's much more serious than that. Let's go to First John. First John 2, 15 through 17. Homongering. That's what we're talking about today. We gotta get these brothers right. They gotta be right. You gotta be right. You gotta be right, brothers. You gotta quit this foolishness. You gotta be men. Holy men. First John 2, 15 through 17, please. First John chapter 2. Verse 15. Uh-huh. Love not the world. Uh-huh. Neither the things that are in the world. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, mm -hmm. the love of the Father is not in him. Hold right there. If any man is in the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So don't talk about you love the most high and you go into the club and you still uh, smoking marijuana and you still sleeping with this one and sleeping with that one and you won't work. 
and you ain't providing for your kids. You ain't paying child support. I don't care if you're not married. You're not doing the thing you're supposed to be doing. You round up cursing. Every word come out your mouth with a dirty word. Talking about you a Hebrew and you are you saved. You ain't saved. You're full of the devil. That's what you're doing. That's why you're doing. You're playing games. You're playing with the word, but the most I said, you're going to be judged. We got to quit this. He said, if any man love the world, so these are the things of the world. You don't have the love of the Father in you. Read, brother. Verse 16. Uh-huh. For all that is in the world, uh -huh. the lust of the flesh, lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eye, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, and the pride of life is not of the Father. Is not of the Father, but is of the world. But is, but is of the world. Hold on right there for me, bro. Hold that, hold that point right there. I got something I wanna, I wanna, uh, I wanna, I wanna read it. I wanna say this. I wanna say this. See, we talked about the lust of the flesh. Lust of the eye. What is the lust of the eye? Lust of the eye is lusting for women. Uh-huh. What are the other things? Eye is full of adultery. Okay? Covetousness. All things desire. These are the lust of the eye. All kinds of evil. Idol worship. Okay? This is what the lust of the eye is. I can give you some scriptures. I won't get into a lot of scriptures today on that. But I just want to mention that. The pride of life. That's self-righteousness. We got a lot of people that are self-righteous. They say they're saved and they're full of the Holy Spirit. Uh, positions. People do anything for positions. They'll sell their soul for a position. Movie stars, other people. And now that some of the saints are doing the same thing. Selling their soul for a position. Beauty. We hung up on beauty. He just got through telling you in the scriptures of Sirach. Don't judge a man by his beauty, ladies. Not say the same thing about me and those beautiful women. Don't be so quick to judge them by their beauty. Okay? Strength to war. That's a pride of life. They like to fight all the time. They love to argue all the time. Constant, va constant vaunting themselves. Constantly bragging about what they got and what they're doing on themselves. That is the pride of life. They like power. They like riches. All these things here are part of the pride of life. That's what they are. So we don't want to be with that. We don't want to be doing these sorts of things. We don't want to do that, okay? This is not the thing that we, we want to do as the Most High, as a child of the Most High. We don't want to do these things. We just don't want to do them because we're going to get ourselves in a world of hurt, in a world of trouble because of this. That's what we're going to do. There's no question about that. No question about it. No question about that. Let's go back to... Uh, What verse are we on? 17? Okay. Okay, go ahead, bro. You finished 16, didn't you? Yes, you did. Okay, read from me, please. Verse 17. Uh-huh. And the world pass passes away. And the world passes away. And the lust thereof. Everything to go, all this lust and stuff going to pass away with the world, people. So if you're doing that and you hold money, guess what? You're going to pass away with it. Keep reading, bro. But he that doeth the will of the Most High uh -huh. abideth forever. He that do the will of the Most High abideth forever. You see that? So we need to, we need to know that. Many men are worldly. These saints are worldly. They're not saints. They say they are with their mouth, but they're not. Okay, let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21. 1 Thessalonians 5th chapter, verse 21. First Thessalonians chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 21. Mm -hmm. Prove all things. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Hold fast, sisters. Okay. And brothers, you too. Hold fast all those things which are good. Prove them. Sister, if he ain't right, if you want to know if he's right, prove him. Hold fast with that which is good. If it's bad, let it go. Let it go if it's bad. But you got to prove him. You can't just listen to what he's telling you with his mouth. He's up here doing, uh, don't be at, going with abstract thinking. Be concrete thinking. If there is no proof of him being good and he's not displaying the, the fruits of the Spirit, guess what? Then you need to walk away from him. But you need to prove it. You need to prove all things that are good. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. And we'll read 15 through 20. Matthew 7. Matthew. 
Matthew chapter 7, mm -hmm. verse 15. Uh-huh. Beware of false prophets. Beware of false prophets. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. Which come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. You see that? They're going to come looking real nice and soft and kind and sweet saying all those sweet things. But inside of them they're ravening wolves. They're ready to tear your flesh off. They're ready to eat your meat off. They're ready to clean you all the way down to the bone. They said beware of these false prophets. And we got a lot of them. Y'all sisters got to beware of these false prophets. These brothers out here. Is doing these things. Oh, they know the truth. Guess what? Talking with the lip, but the heart is far from it. Go ahead, read my brother. Verse 16. Uh-huh. You shall know them by their fruit. You shall know them by their fruit. You see that? They ain't bringing forth good fruit. They bad people. If they if they are bringing forth good fruit, they're good people. Read my brother. Do men gather grapes of thorns uh -huh. or figs of thistles? No, they don't. Keep reading, my brother. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Uh huh. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. You see that? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But every good man bringeth forth good fruit. And every bad man bringeth forth evil fruit. So if your man is bringing forth bad fruit, guess what? He's just a bad man. I don't care what he say. If he's a, if he bringing forth good fruit, he's a good man. He's like a good tree. That's all there is to it. There's no way. According to the word, that you can get them across up. That's as plain as day. Let's go to First Corinthians. I'm sorry. Let's go to Romans 12 and 2. Romans 12 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Mm -hmm. and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But be ye transformed, be ye renewed, be ye be changed by the renewing of your mind. Go ahead, brother. That ye may prove what is that good mm -hmm. and acceptable uh -huh. and perfect will of the Most High. That you may prove what is that good. So you got to prove it. That's the acceptable and the perfect will of the Most High. Not a man. Not of your man that he's talking to you and telling you and you listening to all the stuff he's saying. Because you are, are desperate to get a man. You got to stop that. And he's talking this stuff, but he's living bad. And then later on, you find out the truth, and you're still hanging on him. Well, guess what? If you are going to accept any and everything, he's going to do any and everything. The only way you're going to get it right is you're going to do the perfect will of the Most High. That's what you're going to do. So you don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be doing it. No, you don't. You don't. So you got to prove the perfect will, that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of the Most High. That's what you want to do. You want to do that. That's what you want to do. So it behooves us to do what we're supposed to do and depend upon the Most High. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. Prove all things. You want to prove it. You want to prove all things. First Corinthians chapter two, verse fourteen. Mm -hmm. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit uh -huh. of the Most High. Natural man don't receive the things of the spirit of the Most High. This ain't natural we're dealing with. Go ahead, brother. For they are foolishness unto him. You see that the natural man, the worldly man, these things are foolishness. What we talking about? We talking about these scriptures and and the commandments and stuff. That's foolish to them. Go ahead, brother. Neither can he know them. Neither can he know them. He don't know the Most High. He's lying if he tell you he do. Go ahead, brother. Because they are spiritually discerned. You see that? They're spiritually discerned. You can't be understanding this with no flesh. Ain't nowhere in the world. Go ahead and read, brother. Verse 15. Mm-hmm. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Mm-hmm. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. But yet he himself is judged of no man. You know why? Because he's lining up with the word. And no man can't judge him. Because guess what? You can't judge the word. Okay? But that spiritual man, he can judge all things. Guess what? Because he knows the difference between right and wrong. And the Holy Spirit that's in him will be able to guide and lead him so he can judge. And the saints will be judging in the book of Revelation. In the end, we're going to be helping Yeshua judge these, uh, judge the world. We're going to do that. Those of us who are doing right and will make it, we're going to be there. That's what we're going to do. Let's go to the book of James chapter 1. We're still talking about, we're talking about proving all things. Let's go to James 
chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. James chapter 1, verse 13. Mm hmm let no man say when he is tempted, mm -hmm. I am tempted of the Most High. Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of the Most High. For the Most High cannot be tempted with evil. Most High can't be tempted with evil. Now, he, you can be tempted, but the Most High can't be tempted with evil. So don't blame that on the Most High. Go ahead, brother. Neither tempted he any man. Neither do the Most High tempt you. He ain't never tempted no man. So this thing is not of the Most High when you're being tempted. And don't blame it on him. Don't ever do that. People do that. They say that. Obviously, they doing it. And people are doing it, and the world said, don't do that. Most I don't, he don't be around there trying to tempt you. Go ahead, brother. Read verse 14, please. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Every man is tempted when you're drawn away of his own lust. You see that? You tempted because you've been lusting after him. You've been doing things to the other woman. You ain't had no business. You're lusting after the other woman. You ain't got no business sitting there. You ain't got no business putting your arms around her. You ain't got no business sitting there drinking no wine with her. You ain't got no business doing any of those things. You being tempted and drawn away of your own lust and you ain't enticed that means tempted and you you yielding to it brother you can't blame it on anybody verse 15 please then when lust hath conceived uh -huh. it bring it forth so when you lust after that woman that you have no business lusting after her fornicating after i mean committing adultery after her then when the lust have been conceived it bring it forth sin go ahead brother and sin, when it is fin uh -huh, finished, uh -huh. bring it forth death. And when you get together with that woman and you sin, you get your body and her body and you put it together, outside of the matrimony of marriage, you bring it forth sin, and the sin bring it forth death. You die spiritually as well as naturally, brothers. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Let's go Jeremiah 25, I'm sorry, 29, five, verse 5 and 6. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Build ye houses, and dwell in them, mm -hmm. and plant gardens, and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives, mm -hmm. and beget sons and daughters, mm -hmm. and take wives for your sons, mm -hmm. and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that they may be increased there, and not diminished. Hold on a Jeremiah? 29? No. Yeah, 29. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Not the wrong one. Hold on. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. It said, Build ye houses and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. You see, that's what's wrong. A lot of times people want to get married. They ain't got no house. They ain't got no apartment. They ain't got no money. They ain't got nothing. You sisters, see, we've been doing it the wrong way in Esau land. In the olden days, the Hebrew days, here it is, Jeremiah telling him, said, build a house. That's the first thing you do. You get ready for your wife. You already have the house, the dwelling, you have everything. Plant the garden. You already got some fruit. Okay? You are already set. So when you get married, you just get your bride and bring her into the house. How you going to get somebody's daughter and you ain't got a house to my marrying them? You ain't got a house for her to stay in, a bed for her to sleep in, food for her to eat. You see that? No, you can't do that. You're doing it the opposite. You're doing it backwards. Esau got us all messed up. You're supposed to have the house, the food, the job, everything set for your spouse before you get married. This is the right way so she don't have to worry about that. Read verse 20, uh, verse 6. You read verse 6? Yeah. Okay. Read it again for me, please. Take ye wives. Uh-huh. Take ye wives after you got your house and you're ready. Go ahead on, brother. And beget sons get, and daughters. Get your son and daughter. And take wives for your sons. Your, your daughter-in-laws. Keep reading. And give your daughters to husbands. Okay, a husband-in-law or son-in-law. Keep reading. That they may bear sons and daughters. Uh huh. That ye may be increased there. Uh huh. And not diminished. Okay, so you want to do all these things after you don't got your house together, got married, got your children, and then you get son-in-law and daughter-in-laws and get your grandkids. You see that? That's the order that the Hebrew nation is supposed to be doing. Not going out there getting married and then trying to figure out where we gonna live and oh, I got to have and I got to be with him. He ain't got a job. He ain't got no clothes. He ain't got no furniture. He ain't got no apartment. He ain't got nothing. You're bringing him in there. And he ain't got no spirituality either. 
He's talking with his lip, but he's showing something different. He ain't got no fruits of the Spirit. Can't do that. Jeremiah 29, and let's read verse 28 for me, brother. Let's drop on down. 29, 28. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. the, most high, the Most High hath made the priest in the stead of Jeho Jehoiada, the priest. 29, 29. 29. Yeah, 20, same, same chapter. 29, 29. Sorry. That's verse a verse 29. Uh -huh. not 26. Verse 29. Mm -hmm. And Zephaniah the priest uh -huh. read this letter in the ears of Jeremiah the prophet. Uh huh. 29, 28. 29, 29. Verse 28. 28, right. Same Sorry. chapter. 29. Verse 28. Verse 28. Uh huh. For well, therefore he said, said, sent unto us, uh -huh. sent us unto. Let me read again. Mm -hmm. But therefore he sent unto us in Babylon, mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. this, captiv this captivity is long. Mm -hmm. Build ye houses, mm -hmm. and dwell in them, mm -hmm. and plant gardens, mm -hmm. and eat the fruit of them. You see that? So here he is when they're in captivity. This is what Jeremiah was telling the Hebrew nation. He said, this captivity is long. Build your houses. You see that? Build your houses. Live in them. Plant your garden, and eat the fruit of them. You see that? That's what we got to do, brothers. We got to get a house before we get married. We got to get a house before we take on somebody else's daughter. We got to have our garden together. We got to have our fruit together, our food, our job. We got to have it all together before we take on somebody's daughter. That's what our problem is. We've been messing up. We've been doing it backwards. Let's go to Ezekiel 28 and 26. Ezekiel 28, chapter verse 26. Whoremongering. It's, it's, it's just a shame we got you got to go through all this, but we're gonna get we're gonna deal with it. We're going to deal with it because it needs to be dealt with. 28, 26. Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And they shall dwell safely therein, mm -hmm. and shall build houses mm -hmm. and plant vineyards. Uh-huh. Yea. Uh-huh. They shall dwell with confidence. Uh-huh. And oh, excuse me, when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them. Mm-hmm. They shall know that I am the most high of their power. So once again, here he's talking about us dwelling in houses, planting vineyards, eating good and being ready. We're going to dwell with confidence in our own houses. You see that? When he, And he's going to execute people that are around us, people that have did dirty things. So he's going to execute. But here once again, this is what we got to do. We've been doing it backwards. We've been doing it backwards. Let's go to Genesis, the 24th chapter, verse number 3. We read Genesis 24. Verse 3 and 4. Genesis chapter 24, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And Moses came and told the people, oh, excuse me, I'm 24, 3. Say Genesis, right? mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 24, mm -hmm. verse 3. Mm -hmm. And I will make thee swear by the Most High, mm -hmm. the power of heaven, mm -hmm. and the power of the earth, mm -hmm. that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, mm -hmm. among whom I dwell. So I'm telling you, don't you take these Canaanite women. You spoke them. Don't put your sons and don't let your daughters take them on. Keep reading, brother. Verse 4. Uh -huh. But thou shalt go into my country mm -hmm. and... To, and to my kingdom, mm -hmm. and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Mm -hmm. So here we talking his father Abraham, telling him, "You gonna go into my country and take a wife for my for my son Isaac. Don't go and marry them Canaanite." So it is with us. We have to marry the right people, the right nation. Let's go to Genesis twenty-eight, verse one through four. Twenty-eight, verse one through four. Genesis chapter 28, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And Isaac called Jacob mm -hmm. and blessed him uh -huh. and charged him uh -huh. and said unto him, mm -hmm. Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Cain. Uh -huh. Arise and go to Pan Pandaran, to the house of Bethel, mm -hmm. thy, mother, thy mother's father, mm -hmm. and take thee a wife from thence mm -hmm. of the daughters of Laban, mm -hmm. thy mother's brother. Go and get a daughter from your uncle. Go ahead, brother. And the Most High Almighty bless thee, mm -hmm. and make thee fruitful, uh -huh. and multiply thee, uh -huh. that thou mayest be a multitude of, of people. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. 
and give thee a blessing of Abraham mm -hmm. to thee mm -hmm. and to thy seed mm -hmm. with thee, mm -hmm. that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, mm -hmm. which the Most High gave unto Abraham. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee, the same blessing your daddy got, I'm going to bless you and give it to you, Isaac, and to your seed after you, Isaac, uh, Jacob and Israel, and so on and so on to the Hebrew nation that thou mayest inherit the land which art, wherein thou art a stranger, and we are a stranger even until this day. We are a stranger in this land which the Most High gave unto our grandfather Abraham. He said he's going to bless you and make you fruitful and multiply. You're going to be a multitude of people. And you see, you can't take a Canaanite daughter, but you got to take a Hebrew daughter, brothers. you got to take the right one. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7. We're talking about these bad brothers who are out here playing these games with our sisters. They're going to have to stop this and be men. 1 Thessalonians 4th chapter, verse 4 through 7. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, mm -hmm. verse 4. Uh -huh. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Every man and every woman should know how to possess your vessel, how to control your body in sanctification and in honor. Not unsanctification or unword, uh, uh, unholy. Sanctification means to be set aside. Not connected with any and uh, every other body. Okay? And dishonoring your body. You're not supposed to do that. When you say you are Israel and you say you know the truth, you're supposed to sanctify your body and honor the word of the Most High. Read, brother. Verse 5. Mm-hmm. Not in the lust of conceptuousness, mm -hmm. even as the Gentiles, which know not the most high. You ain't supposed to be around there lusting, lust, all these uh, sexual acts that you lust, a strong desire, that, that word, concus, con, cums, cups, incense, 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 that's what that word is, cumskinesis. You see, you're not supposed to be lusting like these Gentiles, they can't control their lawn, they burning up, they are whoring after everything, you ain't supposed to be there, you're the house of Israel. Israel's supposed to be under control. What do you mean? I can't hear, but I just like say, well, guess what? Get your wife. Guess what? Do what you're supposed to do. Get your husband. You ain't supposed to be doing that. You brothers got to stop this stuff. Whole mongering going from one to the next to the next. This ain't no ping pong game, a ping pinball machine game. Most high looking at you, he see everything you doing, and then call yourself on your way to heaven. Got these women, the sisters all messed all up. No wonder they acting the way they act. Because of you, you're the head. Head is sick, the body going to be sick. Read my brother. Verse 6, mm -hmm. that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. No man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. That's why you ain't supposed to be around another man's wife. You ain't supposed to be, he, if he ain't home, go home. Don't go inside his house. Don't talk to his wife. Stay away from his wife. Don't even put yourself in a position to be tempted. A lot of you do that because you don't have the right attitude or the right intention all along. I got a problem with my wife and I need to talk to someone. Well, go talk to your mama. Go talk to a counselor. Go talk to the minister. That's what you need to do. You don't need to talk to your friends. Why? He ain't there. You don't need to be over there. Don't put yourself in that position. Don't put that sister in that position. Go ahead and read, brother. Because that the Most High mm -hmm. is the avenger of all such. Mm -hmm. as, as we also have forewarned you uh -huh. and testified. Uh -huh. He read. Verse 7. For the Most High hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. You see that? So all these unclean things that you're doing, he didn't call us under that. He didn't call us under that. He called us under holiness. So you can't be trying to say that you are holy and, you, and you're doing all these unclean things. The Most High has a standard. And we got to stick to that standard. See? So we have to go back to the book. In our days, once we became a certain age of things, we, uh, we had to be... Uh, Take an oath, or we went through a, a, a process where we became from a boy to a man. I think that was the age of 12. And so once you did that, you had to what? Begin to really keep these commandments and statutes and laws. But Esau has got us all messed up in our head. We feel like we can do anything, and we don't have to do that. That's why. We became a man. We became a man spiritually by the word of the Most High, the Torah, and we became it by physically by the things that we did. We got to get back to that. These games of sleeping with this one and that, that's that, that, that's of a boy. That's not a man. Not a man of the most high. So we claiming that we know him and we men, 
Guess what? We're supposed to display that. Let's go to First Kings. That's because we ain't studying the word. We got to study the word. We got to get back into the Torah and the Tanakh. First Kings chapter number two, verse number two. First Kings two and two. That's right. You want to be a man, be a man of the word of the most high. Stop playing games. Stop being a boy of the world. That's what you are. When you're doing these games and, and whoremongering. You need to stop that. First Kings chapter two, verse two. Mm -hmm. I go the way of all the earth. Mm -hmm. Be thou strong, therefore, mm -hmm. and show thyself a man. You see that? I go the way of all the earth. Be, be, be strong. And show yourself to be a man. You see that? Show yourself to be a man. Not a boy. Not a gigolo. Not a lover man. Not a whole mother. None of that stuff. But be a man. Handle your responsibilities. Walk right. Talk right. Act right. Sleep right. Conduct yourself in the proper manner according to the word of the Most High. Read, brother. Verse 3. Mm -hmm. And keep the charge of the Most High, thy power. Mm -hmm. Keep the charge of the Most High. Keep it. Keep these commandments. Whatever he told you to do, according to the word, keep it. Keep reading, brother. To walk in his ways. Walk in the Most High ways. And keep his statutes. Keep his statutes. And his commandments. And his commandments. And his judgments. And his judgments. And his testimonies. And his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses. As it is written in the law of Moses. That thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest. That thou may prosper in all that you do. If you ain't prospering, you ain't keeping these commandments. You ain't got a job. You ain't got an apartment. You ain't got a car. You're losing everything. Now, we know Esau going to pick on you. But guess what? There got to be some good light in your life. Despite everything he's throwing at you. If you know you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing, you can expect bad things to happen to you. Keep reading, brother. And whithersoever thou turnest thyself. So wherever you go, on, guess what? These things gonna follow you. Don't expect nothing else to be any better, or you think thing to get better until you line up and keep the charge of the Most High, walking His statutes, His commandments, His judgments, His testimony, as it is written, and you know it, because you say you were Hebrew, you say you awake, you say you are saved, you say you follow the Holy Spirit will walk. So guess what? You're supposed to display that. You're supposed to show it. That's right. You're supposed to show it. So many people around him promoting this thing. Isaiah 4 1 talking about seven men covering, uh, or seven women being covered by one man. These brothers got to get away from that scripture. They got to leave that scripture alone. It ain't time for all. Let's go to 1 Timothy. We want, most high want real men. 1 Timothy, 5th chapter, verse number 8. 1 Timothy 5 and 8. Keep your pants on, brothers. Keep your pants on. Only for your wife. Five and eight. First Timothy chapter five, mm -hmm. verse eight. Mm -hmm. But if any provide not for his own, any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith. You have denied everything you claim you believe in. Keep reading, brother. And is worse than an infant. You're worse than a man that don't even believe in the Most High. He said you're worse. You ain't taking care of your family, you ain't taking care of your kids. I don't care if you ain't in the house with them. Still need to send some money home. You still need to try to make a way for them. You got little baby, guess what? They got to eat. They got to have a roof over their head. They got to have clothes. They got to have shoes. Okay? You got to do that. Say so you're worse than a, than a non believer. You got to support the household. They got to see the most high in you. How are they going to see that if you're not displaying the attributes of a real man of the most high? You know, you want to be a, a lover and all this stuff, running here and running there. Then get mad when the woman talking about, I need some money for Junior. I need some, some food. And, 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 and I'm a man. I'm a man. I love the most high. I'm, a, I'm in the church. You coming to the, the to, quote unquote, the congregation, coming in the church, but you ain't taking care of your kids. How are you going to say you're a minister and you ain't taking care of your child? How are you going to preach and tell somebody else about the time to keep their house in order when your house ain't in order? You ain't handling your responsibility. You got to do better. You got to do better. Especially you position, you can do better. You know you got a job. You can get a job. You need to do that. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians, 3rd chapter, verse number 10. 2 Thessalonians 10. A lot of you brothers in America, y'all know, I understand. Brothers don't got out of America. Some of us, a little difficult for some of us. But that's okay. But you guys are over there. Y'all can get jobs. You're sitting right there and work with the kids and won't do nothing. It don't make no sense at all. Be a man. Stop running around in the street. Stop being a whore monger. Go home. Stay home. You got a wife. Take care of her. Kids, take care of her. 
3 and 10. 1 Thessalonians 3 and 10. I'm sorry, 2 Thessalonians. My fault. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. 2 Thess Thessalonians chapter 3, verse mm -hmm. 10. Mm -hmm. For even when we are with you, mm -hmm. this we command you, mm -hmm. that if any would not work, mm -hmm. neither should he eat. Any man don't work, he ain't eating. This is, go ahead, brother. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, uh -huh. working not at all, but are busy by So these brothers are so busy, they ain't got time to get a job, but they got time to walk and cause confusion. They got time to run somebody else down. They got time to talk about somebody else causing disorder amongst the brethren. But they ain't doing what they're supposed to do when it comes to take. If you're working, you ain't got time to be running your mouth. You ain't got time to be gossiping. You ain't got time to be carrying the bone. Guess what? Because you're going to be so tired when you come home, you're going to fall out on the couch. You're going to want to take a shower. You're going to want to eat your little supper and go to sleep. You're going to want to be seeing your wife. You ain't going to have time to be running them streets. That's right. We got to learn as men of the Most High, we can't compromise our integrity. We can't compromise our integrity, honor, words, our gifts from the Most High. For anything else, especially not for no sex, we can't compromise. We can't compromise. Y'all got to stop that. You're compromising everything you're supposed to have and everything you're supposed to represent for sex. Homemongering. You got to stop this foolishness. That's not right. That's not right. And the Most High is not pleased with that. And we have to also understand that satanic worship is what? Deal with phallic worship. So if you around there can keep your pants on, okay, and you still got to have this woman and that woman, guess what? You got some devil in you. That's what, that's what them, them, them evil people, Lucifer folks do. They have a, a worship in their, their genital part. That's all they deal with. Wild stuff. If you say you have the most high, you ought to be able to control yourself. Get yourself together. You need to straighten out. And be a real man so these sisters can have some real husbands and don't be getting these whole mongers and messing them up and they testing themselves to you and then they come to find out you ain't representing the most high. You represent them with your mouth, but your life is raggedy. The most high is tired of that. And with that message, and then with that birch, we're gonna stop at this point. Talking about whole monger and this brotherhood meeting. And I hope, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you've heard something that would inspire you, encourage you to do that which is right. Those brothers out there who are doing this, quit this. It's a problem. It's a real problem. Now, I'm talking to our young sisters, and I'm hearing all kinds of stuff that's disturbing to me. It's really disturbing to me. And this is supposed to be among Hebrews that have been knowing the truth for years, this kind of stuff. This doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever. And some of them got, a lot of them got good women. They got good wives. But they're out there tipping on them and messing up. And then the poor woman don't know what to do. Because now she's confused, she don't bond with him, and she feels like she got a husband, but yet at the same time, the brother won't what? He won't act right. He won't do right. So this is presenting a problem for the Hebrew nation. And it is a problem. It's a problem for us. It is, because we're following out the Esau. That's what the world, that's what the Gentiles do. So we got to quit this foolishness, and we got to get it together. We got to stop whoremongering, and we're going to have to live like the Most High require us to live. So with that note being said, we're going to stop right now at this point. We're going to have a little quick word of prayer. I'm thanking the Most High for this recording. And we're going to stop and we're going to entertain questions. Father, we thank you for the blessing today of the Brotherhood meeting. And Father, we pray that something was said to inspire and encourage men all over the earth to do that which is right to stop whoremongering. Those who have wives to be faithful and truthful to them. And other ones that's messing up to quit doing what they're doing, Father. For it's causing too much pain and too much dissension and destruction in the Hebrew nation. And these brothers are sinning against their own bodies. They don't realize the serious nature of this. But I realize it and I see it and it is a problem. So we need to address it and we need to head, deal with it head on. And that's what we're attempting to do. So bless the word as it went forth today. Let this recording be received in the right way. It's not to bash or knock anyone, but it's to help them realize they got a problem. It's like an alcoholic needs to recognize he's an alcoholic. He can't get no help. The whole monk got to realize he's a whole monger. And he got to get help. We thank you for all things. Now bless your word as it go forth. Bless each and every one on the sound of my voice. We want to thank you right now in the name of a higher usher, a higher by a shim, walk or dash. We walk the water, the water, the water, the Thank you, Father. Amen. And this time we're going to stop. Uh, we won't stop the uh, broadcast. We're going to give it a little bit more time. We're going to stop the recording.